Hey YouTube people, today we're going to be talking again about the 2022 Zephyrus G14. And the reason I wanted to talk about this uh, today is I've been seeing quite a bit of misinformation regarding this device across the internet from reviews to Reddit to Discord to just even my own comments in my videos. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about this device and I just wanted to bring up several of those things and I'm gonna tell you exactly what those things are because there's I think five of them so a price reporting on this thing uh, by major review outlets the 308 BIOS update a lot of people are saying hey this GIMP performance it does it's it's not fast anymore after installing the 308 BIOS I've got some opinions on that the USB-C charging capability um, and I want to answer the question, is the 2022 G14 too hot? And also, what does performance look like on battery? What does performance look like on USB-C? And how does that compare to when it's on its full power modes? So we got a lot to cover here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with the first one. Let's talk about the price reporting on this G14. So, so many, I mean, you saw probably even The Verge uh, said, oh, Here's the G14, but now it's too expensive. Um, and so many places kind of were reporting the same thing. Unfortunately, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it was because Asus sent them their highest end units. It seems like they did that last time as well. But what they did is they went and looked and said, oh, well, last year's has cost $1,500, but the now it's, it's $2,500. But what they don't realize is like, Asus sells different models of these, and the Anime Matrix version was always very expensive. It wasn't fifteen hundred compared to twenty five hundred; it was you know two thousand plus to twenty five hundred. And here's the thing: I bought the twenty twenty one G fourteen on launch day. No one gives me these devices to review them yet. I am open to being contacted, Asus reps. I'm right here. Um, so, anyways. Uh, the 2021 version was $1,499 at Best Buy. The 2022 version came in at $1,649, uh, so a $150 increase. So no, it wasn't thousands more. It was $150 more, apples to apples, you know, on the same variant that you would actually buy of this device. We now have this version. Uh, there's just a newer top tier version and then the top top tier with the anime matrix device so um the comparable comparison is 1500 versus 1650 but let's talk about that 150 dollars what did you get for 150 dollars versus last year okay well think about it we've got ddr5 super expensive ddr5 is in here you've got a brighter faster display you're talking 500 nits versus 350 that that costs money to, to get those better specs, uh, and they really stepped it up this year. You've got a larger AC brick, and you have a completely redesigned uh, vapor chamber cooling in here that you did not have last year. Um, it seems taking that into effect, along with inflation, you got what, seven to 10% inflation this year? Okay, I think we're okay. It's basically equivalent price points with a lot of value adds here. So I'm not up in arms about the price like everybody else. I think it's probably about what it needs to be. Yes, if you compare the open box ones at Best Buy you can get for 1200 bucks, that's probably where your value is. Um, but in a couple months, you'll be able to get this for, you know, open box 1100 at some point or 1000 You know, they go on sale. So it, it's very equivalent in pricing. I'm not upset with, with the pricing. Okay, so let's talk about the 308 BIOS. Uh, some people had reported that, uh, hey, instead of getting the 120 watts, this was the 6800S version, rather than getting 115 watts, it was only pulling 80 watts now. So their fix was, they claimed that Asus fixed the problem by you know, not allowing this, the device to perform its full capability. Okay, so I have the 6700S, but I have installed the 308 BIOS. And what the 308 BIOS did to me was made it so it wouldn't crash anymore. I am not able to run Furmark at full speed in turbo mode and make it crash. It works now. The 308 did something. It may have relaxed memory timings on the GPU or the CPU. I don't know what it did. 
However, it is not crashing on me. But did it get my performance? Do I now have less watts? Well, I ran the same test and it's still pulling its 115 watt power budget with the 308 BIOS. So no, it, it has not been nerfed in any way. Uh, it just improves stability. And here's the thing. This thing has been rock stable since I got 308. It has not crashed once since then. So, and I've really put it through its paces. I'm running benchmarks all day long on this thing. So, um, I would not be worried, you know, that the performance you're seeing today is not going to be there in the future because it, because it is. And I've, I've, t I've done the test. It's, it's there. Now that's not to say that the people are reporting this. I, I think they maybe made a mistake. I think they maybe didn't check it out and their GPU just happened to be using a certain amount of Watts due to thermal load. Uh, and I don't know, maybe they changed the, the tuning curve, but uh, I have not, I did not see a difference. I had this exact same within 1% scores on my benchmarks after moving to the 308 BIOS. So it's not an issue. It's, it's 308 BIOS is good. I like it. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about heat because everywhere I'm seeing everybody say the 2022 is so hot. And okay, let's talk about this because Yes, the readout on the temperature gauge is higher. I'm not denying that. Is it technically, is the temperature higher? Yes, technically the temperature is higher, but temperature is not heat. I'm telling you guys, there is two things to consider here. So when, when I say temperature is not heat, I'm saying, think about an oven. An oven is what, 350 degrees. You turn that thing on, it's producing a lot of heat. You know, it warms up your house. There's so much heat coming off it. Heat is different than temperature. Temperature, say you strike a match. You've got a little flame on there and that's very bright and very hot temperature wise. And you know, that's thousands of degrees, that flame on the end of that match, but it's not making a lot of heat. So here's the thing guys, we just moved in 2022, the CPU went from a seven nanometer process to a six nanometer process. The GPU went from a 3060 on an eight nanometer process down to a six nanometer process. Both are six nanometer now. So guess what? When that process node shrinks down, but yet you increase the amount of resistors, there are, every time there's a process node shrink, there's just less surface area for them to work with on, uh, with the transistors. So it, the temperature ends up being hotter. So it doesn't, it, we would expect it to be hotter temperature wise than anything else. That doesn't mean this thing is not efficient. And it doesn't mean that it actually is going to feel hotter to the touch. Although in the testing that most people have done, it's about two degrees hotter. So, and I'm not, I'm not just saying, well, yeah, I just invalidated my whole point. My point is don't be scared by the number you're seeing on the screen and try to compare it to a gaming laptop that you've had before because A, it's a different architecture than the NVIDIA stuff, but also it's a smaller process node. So, I mean, ask anyone who who's in the industry who understands how the process nodes work. Anytime you shrink it, temperature goes up, heat output usually goes down. So, um, I just wanted to bring that up so people understand that. Um, here's the thing, it, as long as it, it is not, it's not any hotter or burning you, it's not, um, d the readout is of minor concern. I mean, it's a good to keep an eye on those things. You know, you may need to repaste at some point if it's getting too hot for, compared to when it was new, but it's, it's kind of adjusting to a new norm more than anything. Um, so yeah, don't, unless you unless it's crashing, which they're not, they're fine. They're, they're, they're operating within their temperature, their AMD God given temperature ranges, right? So they're fine. Um, when, and you can't compare it apples to apples with anything else. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's really not too hot. It is very efficient. I'm going to show you some of the efficiency that you can pull out of this thing. And I am very impressed with how much power you can extract, sorry, performance that you can extract from this at even lower power. So let's get into that because that brings us to our next topic, which is how fast is this thing when you have it plugged into USB-C? 
A lot of people just want to carry a simple 100 watt USB-C charger and be done with it. You know, the, the PowerBook's br bigger this year, so it's like, it's big. It's 240 versus the 180 of last year, but I have prepared some charts and I want to show them to you. So take a look at this. So at full power, you have a 115 watt power budget. We're looking at the first line here. Uh, the performance score uh, was 9860. You saw that in my last video. So that is our bench, our baseline. So it's 100% performance at 100% of the power budget. So when it's plugged into USB-C power, uh, the machine does not let you go above 75 watts. So it tends to, it seemingly tends to like let the CPU grab what it wants and then whatever's left over, it kind of gives to the GPU. That's how I've seen this work with its smart shift. And I think it works really well. It seems to be very efficient in that, but, but consider this. We got a score of 8506, which is 86% of the performance of full bore while using only 65% of the power. That is pretty rad. That means you don't have to have the full brick. You get 75 watts and it performs really, really well. What this tells me is Asus, you know, took these chips and they wanted to get, you know, they wanted to prove that they had the most performance possible. Um, so these chips are like a little happier with with producing less heat almost. Um, but to get that that upper level of performance, Asus was just like, okay, we'll we'll let it we'll let it uh, go to the max capability of where it's tapping into the highest temperature, where it's going to start throttling because of temperature. And here's the deal, um, that's great, and the performance is there, but by lowering your power budget just a little bit, um, you can really reduce the amount of power that this thing is using for not very much give up in performance. So when it's on battery, it has a 50 watt power budget, and the score that it got was 65.85, which was 67% of performance while using 40% of the power. That is nuts. I don't know if any of you have ever tried to go unplug any of your last gen gaming laptops and continue to play. It goes down to a stutter fest. It just does not like that. Um, but this machine, it just adjusts its TDP for the stack of CPU and GPU and it keeps on going and it has enough power and efficiency to give you really decent frame rates even when you're on battery. I mean, I think I would get like something like 33% of the normal performance if I was unplugged, if it ran at all. Um, sometimes it's just like, hey, I'm done. You know, if, you, if, you're not on, if you're not on mains, it's just not gonna work for you. So anyways, here's another chart. So here we are, here, here's what I propose. If you just shave 15 watts off this thing, if you're worried about the temps or whatever, like look at what you, look at what you can do. So full power, you're getting 90 plus temperature. You pull it back 15 watts to 100. You can see in those or this orange line, you're going to get 92.62 on that performance score, which is 94% of the performance that you got at full bore. And you're doing it by only using 86% of the power and your temps drop to 83. And on USB-C, I've got those numbers too. So 75 watts equals 79 degrees temperature, and that's on the GPU. Uh, and battery power, when you're running 50 watts, it's going to go up to 71 watts. Sorry, 71 degrees. My bad. Uh, so all I'm trying to say is, is this device is super efficient. Um, and you can do some really cool things. Uh, I know a lot of people that would love to just carry USB-C and be done with it. And you can do that on this device without giving up very much at all. So... Anyways, I hope that that information is super interesting and uh, it's probably stuff that no one else is giving you. So if you like this type of video, you like kind of the way I like looking at stuff and sharing it with you guys, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like it. Uh, it really helps out the channel. Um, hey, Asus, uh, if you ever want to send me laptops, let me know. Be happy to look at them. Because um, I pay for all this myself, and uh, it really helps all the support that I get from you guys. And I appreciate that over the years. I, th I think I've been on YouTube since 2007. So um, anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon on the next video.